Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us uh, for this uh, special afternoon as we host Eric Batchelder's uh, senior recital. We wanted to and we scheduled to have this gathering uh, in person with a full house this afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, like everything else, uh, plans had to change. Uh, nevertheless, we want to bring this recital to you uh, on this afternoon. We hope you enjoy it. Eric Batchelder is a graduating senior at Waverly Central High School. He uh, has been in the All West Blue Band and the All State Concert Band all four years of his high school years. He has attended the Tennessee Governor School for the Arts and in doing so he maxed out uh, the scholarships available to him. His senior year, he has been the drum major for the Waverly Tiger Marching Pride Band. Eric is planning to attend uh, MTSU this fall and major in music education, and he will also join the clarinet studio under Dr. Todd Waldecker. He is accompanied today in his recital uh, by Katie Brown. Would you uh, join me as we welcome and enjoy the recital from Eric Batchelder? Thank you. 
Testing. Hi, everyone watching. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for coming to watch my recital um, from where you are. Uh, the first piece you just heard is entitled Adagio e Tarantella by Ernesto Cavallini. Ernesto Cavallini is an Italian clarinetist composer. Uh, he's also known as the Paganini of clarinet, if you know who the Paganini is. Uh, he was born in eight, August 30th, 1807 in Milan, Italy. He uh, studied at the Milan Conservatory under Carulli. He became principal clarinetist of La Scala under Giacomo Canizza, and he taught at the Milan Conservatory and spent 15 years performing in St. Petersburg from 1852 to 1867. He is best known for, um, as his composer, he's best known for his works, uh, Adagio e Tarantella, like you just heard, Adagio Sentimental, um, his fantasies, and if for the many clarinet players you've been watching, you know his caprices, which are very hard. And he died uh, January 7th, um, 1874, in his home in Milan. Uh, the next piece you're about to hear is Rhapsody for solo clarinet. Uh, by William Osborne. He was born in 1806 and he studied theory and composition at the University of Michigan with Rosalie Fleming and he was a student of Paul Hindemith at Yale University. He is a neoclassical composer which is 20th century composers who use forms and thematic processes of the classical era of music. He taught music theory and composition at the Philadelphia New School of Music which is now part of uh, the Boyer College, at, Boyer College of Music at Temple University. Um, his work remains very unknown. It's not really public, I guess, um, except for his Rhapsody, which is the most frequently performed in the literature for unaccompanied bassoon, but it was later adapted as a popular recital piece for the solo clarinet, and he died in 1979 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania.
So my last and final piece for you guys is, uh, hold on again. Hello, maybe, maybe, okay. Oh. So my last and final piece is the Solitian Chorus by Andre Messager. So Andre Charles Prospero Messager was born in December 30th 1893. He is a French organist, composer, pianist, and conductor. Um, part of a lot of his um, composed works includes eight ballets and 30 operas. Um, he took piano as a small child and was later um, studied, he later studied composition with many people, including Camille Saint-Saëns and Gabriel Farré. He is very prominent in uh, Paris and London as a conductor. In 1899, he composed the Soledad Chorus, which in French means composition solo, as a Paris Conservatoire contest piece for students as their, um, their final exam in the school. Um, there are countless Soledad Chorus written for clarinet at the Paris Conservatory, which was formed in 1795, where contests of uh, people entering were awarded uh, various prizes. Um, each Soledad Chorus was written to display virtuosity, character, and style and Messager's um, Soleil Concours was no exception. It has become a staple in the clarinet's repertoire and also one of the known as the rite of passage for clarinetists. Um, he later died in uh, February 24th, 1929. Uh, a lot of my friends who've heard me talk about this piece know that it was a struggle, but um, I wanted to quit it, but I ended up liking it. This was the piece that I used in my college auditions that I won scholarships with. Um, it goes on to describe the piece, but I won't, I'll spare you those details, but I do think that it's interesting that they think the middle, the, the middle part is a very prominent French melody, so I will drink some more water now and play my final piece in the recital, Andre Metager's Soleil Concourse.
So, uh, <laughs> so uh, now my mouse will I'll pull my internet down. That'll be a lot easier. So that was my recital. Um, I would like to give many thanks. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Waverly Church of the Nazarene for letting me still play here and um, for doing all this for me, uh, doing the live stream, making sure it's recorded. Um, I'd like to thank Miss Katie for playing with me. She played for me for free, which is something she shouldn't have had to do, but she did, and it meant a lot. Um, I organized this all in my head, so let me go in order. Uh, I'd like to thank my family, of course. They always make sure that all my clarinet stuff is good, and uh, anytime I need anything, I have it within reason. <laughs> uh, so no BAM case. Uh, really thankful for them. They always come to my concerts and pay for my lessons. And then, of course, my grandparents. Uh, anytime I need something, they're always willing to take me. Like, I'm, there's a lot, my parents are very busy people. And there's so many things that I probably would not have been able to go to if it weren't for my grandma or Biggie taking me to like Murfreesboro or anywhere. I'm really grateful for them. Uh, they took me to a lot of auditions, to a lot of fun things. And then the rest of my family, they've just always been really supportive of what I do. Um, for teachers, I've had, privilege, I've had the privilege of studying with three really good teachers. Um, my first current teacher, Dr. Krista Fry, I took for her and then Dr. Spencer Pruitt, and then took from Todd, Dr. Todd Waldegger last year at Governor's School. And um, I've learned so many wonderful things from them, from them that I'm able to carry on. I'm really excited that I get to study with Dr. Waldecker um, at MTSU this fall. So, hi, Dr. Waldecker, I know you're watching. <laughs> um, and he's been a great help for me preparing for college stuff, and he's really been helping me. I'm a first-gen college student, he's just been making sure and keeping things on track and seeing that they're in there for me. Um, I have uh, also, I was supposed to play another piece today, but my friend Whitney Roberts um, was not able to come out because of COVID-19, but I just want to thank Whitney for preparing her piece, um, even though we weren't able to perform together, but she's, uh, we, we've known each other for a little over a year now, but we really bonded at Governor's School, and we've talked every day since then. Um, she's one of my best friends, and she's, uh, she lives like two hours away. She was really going to drive two hours here to play like a minute a piece of music, which really means a lot to me, but she's one of my best friends. And uh, we're not going to school together, but she's going to be studying 45 minutes away from me at Vanderbilt, so she's very good, better than me. <laughs> um, and then I have so many friends, music that I probably would have never would have met without the clarinet. Um, I have so many friends at school who maybe don't do music, but they know I love what I do and they're always willing to support me. And I'm just very thankful for everyone, you know, I'm very thankful. So thank you all for coming and watching my recital. <laughs>